And a very pleasant Sunday to you. What a beautiful day it is. Absolutely sunny and gorgeous. And it's hard to imagine that on a day like this, there'd be people feeling hopeless, disinterested, sad, empty, and basically just flat emotionally. But 95% of us humans go through, at some point in our lives, depressed mood states. Uh, some of them are more severe. Others are uh, are less severe. And sometimes it's caused by something that's happened in our lives, a breakup of a relationship, the loss of a job, the death of a friend or family member, or even a pet. Totally normal conditions. However, when it goes on and on and on, it may be time to seek uh, some professional help. And uh, we're going to tell you today why it should not be medications. We're happy to welcome one of our most popular experts here at CFON 1410 AM. His resume includes heading up the Faculty of Child Psychology at the University of Ottawa. After that, he lectured in psychiatry at Harvard for seven years before coming to Vancouver. And now he's become one of the leaders in the field of biofeedback and neurotherapy, the medical science of adjusting your brain waves and making you feel a whole lot better without the medication. We're very lucky to have him in Vancouver and answering your questions live today. It's Dr. Paul Swingle, and this is a little show we do called It's All in Your Head, and it's good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, I mentioned the beautiful sunny day, and we're going to talk about seasonal affective disorder, which uh, about this time of year, you mm -hmm. probably have a lot of people that come into your office that say, why am I feeling so lousy all of a sudden? Yes, light, <clears throat> light restriction uh, is an important uh, cause of uh, some low mood states, seasonal affective disorder, so you can be sad even though the sun is out, my mm. friend. <laughs> yeah, and you've got lots of different ways of, of dealing with that because so many of us do. 95%, mm -hmm. though, that seems incredibly high. For uh, I'd like to know what those 5% are doing right uh, to avoid depression. Well, uh, they will be part of next year's five, uh, oh. <laughs> 95%. It's 95% of the population will endorse a statement like... <clears throat> They feel low. They feel hopeless. Uh, they even have uh, thoughts of suicide, uh, depressed mood states. We'll endorse a statement like that, <clears throat> that they experience something like that about once a year. You uh, deal with this a lot at your clinic. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, would it be fair to say that it may be the number one thing that brings people through your doors? It's a significant portion of the uh, client population that we see. As you know, we see uh, a huge number of different uh, disorders, a wide variety of disorders and a wide variety of ranges. But one of the things that we find is what's called comorbidity, so that a child may come in with ADD, but you find that there's depression there as well. Uh, or somebody may come in with fibromyalgia and there's a depressed mood state associated with it. Anxiety conditions very frequently are accompanied with uh, depression and certainly sleep disturbance. Uh, individuals uh, report symptoms that uh, could be <clears throat> classified as depressed mood state, Lord of, loss of interest in things, low motivation, uh, poor libido, feeling down, feeling uh, low energy, that sort of thing. Those are characteristics associated with depression, but the cause of it is probably sleep disturbance. Now, you can misdiagnose that, <clears throat> end up on some sort of uh, antidepressant medication, then you really have a problem. We're going to talk a lot about medication today, but I want to get into what you do. And uh, in fact, you have a free public lecture. You have these uh, every once in so often, and uh, you know, depression and attention deficit disorder, anxiety, just some of the issues that you'll talk about. Uh, neurotherapy and brainwave biofeedback treatments, and uh, that's what uh, Dr. Swingle will be talking about this coming Wednesday, and it's free, uh, 7 o'clock at the Confederation Community Center at 4585 Albert Street in Burnaby. That's this Wednesday, 7 o'clock at uh, Confederation Community Center, free, but... Uh, I guess you uh, are first come for a serve, or, or do you have to get a, some kind of a ticket or anything on a list of some kind, or you just show up? Just show up. Okay. We if, have lots of space. If you have uh, any, you know, other, if you want to make sure you get that right, you can go to uh, Dr. Swingle's website. It's swingleandassociates.com, swingleandassociates.com, and Swingle, by the way, is spelled swing, L-E, and his clinic is on Melville Street in downtown Vancouver. And the telephone number there is 608-0444. I'll give that number out uh, throughout the show. 608-0444. We're talking about depression. And before we get into the meat of this particular uh, ailment, let's talk about what you do in neurotherapy and brainwave biofeedback. Because, um, you know, still, 
uh, even after 40 years of it being around, uh, mm -hmm. people say, well, what does it do? What happens to me? And, you know, they think of things like one flew over the cuckoo's nest and electroshock therapy, and they think, well, what, what are you going to mm -hmm. do to me? It's painless and, uh, and, and quite simple, actually, for you folks. But what is it that you're doing? What we're doing is we are looking at the brain and we're looking for areas of inefficiency in the way the brain's processing information. The way that we do that is we use an electroencephalograph, the same EEG that's used in hospitals, <clears throat> but far more sophisticated databases. When a client comes in, I don't ask them why they're there. I have a look at five or six critical areas in the brain and we're measuring the electrical activity coming from the brain. You don't feel anything. We're measuring only. <clears throat> and I ask the person to open and close their eyes, ask them to read something, uh, and play a sound to see how the brain responds to sound. And then I sit down, do some calculations, and I tell them why they've come to see me. The brain <clears throat> is that precise. It will tell us everything. So, for example, there are a number of different brain configurations, brain wave configurations that are associated with depression. So when a client comes in uh, and I see that, I ask them if they're predisposed to uh, depressed mood states. Now, the way we normalize or correct those inefficiencies is referred to as neurotherapy. And there are several classes of treatment in neurotherapy. And the first is neurofeedback, biofeedback for the brain. And that is a self-regulatory learning procedure <clears throat> in which we provide the client with information about brain activity that they couldn't possibly feel. But they make use of that information to learn how to self-regulate. The second class of treatments are the brain drivers. Those were primarily developed in my clinics. There we measure a particular aspect of brain functioning Based on that measurement, we stimulate with light, sound. For adults, we might use micro stimulation, EMF fields, and so forth to nudge the brain into more normal functional ranges. And that situation is updated every second, so it's a very dynamic kind of thing. The good news is once it's fixed, it's fixed. Once we get into the normative range, <coughs> we do a few sessions to, to uh, stabilize it. There are a couple of exceptions to the once it's fixed, it's fixed. When you get to be my age, you have to come in two or three times a year to get your brain tuned up to stay <laughs> sharp. <coughs> but other than that, once it's fixed, it's fixed. And it's FDA compliant, data driven, nothing <coughs> alternative about it in that sense at all. And then, of course, you also recommend uh, home treatments, too, which uh, things mm -hmm. like the CD you gave me for, for sleep, which has a, sort of a, a white noise that you put on just mm -hmm. below. But there's other home uh, treatments you can suggest as well. Yes, we, we have a lot of things that we do for individuals. For example, if somebody comes in with a seasonal affective disorder, <clears throat> we correct any predispositions they might have to depressed mood states. But in order to get some rapid uh, relief, we uh, uh, prescribe light. Uh, treatment uh, uh, devices that they can take home and harmonics, similar to the one that you have, that uh, correct uh, some brain activity so the person can get some immediate relief <laughs> while we're trying to stabilize brain activity. Our telephone number here at CFUN is 280-CFUN, 280-2386, star 1410 on the cell phone, or if you're calling from outside the Lower Mainland, it's one 280 cfun 280-2386. Dr. Swingle is here live right now. He'll be happy to answer your questions. We've had lots of phone calls before on this particular subject. So if you have been feeling a certain way for quite some time and uh, maybe you've had some kind of trauma in the past or maybe you're really struggling with medication and whether to continue taking it or whether you're on a lot of it, 280-C-FUN, uh, 280-2386. And I think the biggest thing that I got after just a couple of sessions uh, at your clinic uh, when I was really struggling with sleep, I mean, uh, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's woken up at 2 or 3 in the morning and then just laid there staring at the ceiling and mm -hmm. not being able to go back to sleep. And that, that's, for my job, really, really difficult. But uh, there's just a hope that you get after the first couple of sessions that actually there is something you can do without taking the drugs. And, and I, mean, I think one of the biggest thrusts of your program here is that uh, the medication can really set you back and uh, make your job that much more difficult down the road. Absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, medication, there's a, certainly a role for medication. I don't have a knee-jerk reaction against it. Uh, the problem that we have is we're medicating normal behavior. 
And anytime somebody feels a little blue, <clears throat> they take a, a pill or they take a drink or something because they just don't want to feel that way. And, and that's what life's all about. You know, we have ups and downs, and processing of this uh, kind of thing is what life's all about. And if you always want to take the bottom end off, then you're taking the top end off as well. <clears throat> and if you start to medicate something like seasonal affective disorder or reactive depression, you know, somebody dies or you uh, lose a job or something, uh, then you really have a problem because you never process any of that information any of that content. So that's the, the uh, problem that I have with the medication issue. And we are hugely over-medicated as a population. The statistics are staggering, just staggering. Well, we'll get into some of those <clears throat> statistics, and we'll get into some stories of people who have come into your clinic and uh, how they were before, how they wound up after, as we continue on a little show we do called It's All in Your Head with Dr. Paul Swingle from Swingle & Associates. The website address, swingleandassociates.com. He's uh, downtown on Melville Street at 6080444. And if you have any questions for the doctor who is here live, our telephone number is 280-C-Fund, 280-2386 or star 1410 if you're driving around on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. More on neurotherapy, biofeedback. Coming up in just a moment, you're listening to CFUN, 1410 AM. Nice to have you with us on a Sunday morning with Dr. Paul Swingle from Swingle and Associates on Melville Street in downtown Vancouver, a man who helps many people with many different issues without medication. And once it's fixed, it's fixed. It's uh, CFUN, 1410 AM, and our telephone number is 280-CFUN, 280-2386. If you have any questions about what neurotherapy really is, or perhaps you have feelings or you've had struggles with certain ailments or issues for quite some time, the doctor is making, well, I guess it's uh, you're calling him. It's not really a house call, I suppose, but it's close. And you're working on a book right now, which uh, should be out pretty soon, shouldn't it? I mean, we've been talking about this for a while, Biofeedback for the Brain. Yes, uh, it's with Rutgers University Press, and it should be out early spring. Uh, it's all finished. That's uh, They're doing the design for the covers as we speak. Excellent. And so look for that in the store shelves. We'll talk more about that as it gets closer to coming out. And you're mm -hmm. also doing one for the, the general practitioner, too, because uh, and one of those things that's starting to happen now is GPs are starting to refer people to you with issues like depression. Yes, there's a basic form of uh, neurotherapy that can be used quite readily for th simple problems like depression, ADD, that uh, we're trying to encourage primary care physicians and primary care psychologists <coughs> to, uh, to use uh, in addition to whatever it is they commonly use. So, for example, if a uh, physician uh, wants to uh, use a bit of antidepressant to help a person over a, a bit of a hump. They can also do a neurotherapeutic evaluation, determine if there's a predisposition, do a few sessions to normalize that, titrate them off the medication, and job done. And <clears throat> That makes infinitely more sense uh, in terms of fixing it once and for all, and it's very doable. You know, it's funny. I just had a, a person uh, that I, I'm associated with tell me that they were suffering from depression for quite some time and you know here's a person that uh, gave absolutely no signs whatsoever of being depressed mm -hmm. a man who hit it very very well and you know literally the roof just caved in the other day and so I told him about you and what you do uh, and and as uh, I started talking to him a little bit more you know having spoken to you quite a bit now um, it turns out that there was a very traumatic life event what happens uh, to the brain? What's happening when we have a really traumatic life event? And, and, and it could be anything from the death of a, of a loved one to, mm -hmm. to an accident of some kind. Uh, how do you see that on, on a brain assessment, and, and what happens from there? You know, that's uh, interesting. <clears throat> People that come in with uh, depression very often show a trauma signature on the brain. And a trauma signature is a very specific waveform that's affected by severe emotional trauma. And when we see that, then part of the process is uh, releasing that brain wave, releasing the emotion associated with it, uh, helping the person process it, and then correcting any other you know anomalies that you might see. <clears throat> we were 
talking in break about the one particular case that we had uh, that I think exemplifies this, in which neurotherapy, neurofeedback is not a standalone discipline. It has to be integrated with some other uh, therapeutic procedure. A physician has their medications uh, that they use. Psychologists have their psychotherapies and so forth. <clears throat> and the, br the uh, real uh, advantage of the neurotherapy is you're correcting the neurology of it. And then the other processes are, are uh, much, much, much more efficient. For example, the case we discussed, a woman came in severely depressed and we took care of some of the uh, neurological conditions but she was showing the trauma signature and I asked her what is the most significant thing she could remember as a child <clears throat> that she might think was a defining moment in terms of who she felt she was and you know those sorts of issues and she related a story she felt that she was very clumsy and awkward, and her parents were always admonishing her, you know, stop being so clumsy, you drop that again, etc. But the case that she, uh, the situation that she reported is, was markedly different from that. Her mother asked her to carry a tray of drinks out to the porch where there were some guests, and, you know, it was lemonade and tea and whatever. And she's walking with this tray and tripped and the whole thing went all over the place. And the defining event was her mother looked at her with just a mild uh, expression of disgust, but she didn't say one word to the child. She just cleaned up everything and acted as though the child wasn't there. And that the woman felt that that was the defining moment in which she developed shame and shame is who you are not what you've done so she felt like a deficient markedly deficient uh, uh, individual from that moment on one therapy session associated with that and that was done and finished so psychotherapy in and of itself can be enormously <coughs> effective the bottom line is who's doing it you know, if you have a really good therapist who is really on top of it and, more importantly, really cares about your well-being, you can have remarkable changes. And the data on that are very clear. Psychotherapy, <clears throat> excuse me, various forms of therapy versus medication, no contest. The They may be about the same in terms of giving you relief in the short term, but you take away the medication and you have a problem, the psychotherapy changes it forever. And the long-term stability, the data are remarkably different. So, and that's one of the advantages to your clinic, and I, I know you talk about this a lot, is that you do offer all those full service, I guess, if you will, uh, features, whereas, you know, you, you, you talk about these hobbyists, you mm -hmm. know, who it's a one-size-fits-all solution, and that's, that's a really important consideration if you're thinking about going into this kind of treatment. It's a huge issue. We have a lot of hobbyists, one size fits all, <clears throat> popping up in the city. They buy a franchise, <clears throat> and the requirements are warm, uh, warm blood in the checkbook. That's Dr. Paul Swingle from Swingle and Associates. You're listening to CFUN 1410 AM. It's all in your head. Our telephone mm -hmm. number here at CFUN is 280 CFUN, 280-2386, and Dr. Swingle is here live today. Star 1410 on your cell phone or uh, toll free at uh, one eight seven seven two eight zero 280 cfun And it's an amazing, it, that seems like such a benign uh, story about dropping a tray of drinks out on the patio, but the mm -hmm. fact that she remembered it uh, so clearly, and you wonder, you know, you look back in your own past, was there anything that, did I ever have any, you know, incident like that that I remember? But, I mean, you must see that all the time where you unearth mm -hmm. these, these life-altering issues. It's a standard. Uh, we do a lot of somato-emotional release, EMDR, <clears throat> a lot of techniques to uh, release that emotionality and process it in a very efficient kind of manner. It's a very efficient psychotherapy. Uh, <clears throat> part of what we do when we release the, the uh, brainwave activity associated with the trauma is we're engaging the body's normal psychotherapeutic mechanisms. We're all... Uh, 
outfitted to do our own psychotherapy. Otherwise, we wouldn't survive as a uh, as a species. The problem is it gets stuck. Now, if we can release that neurologically, we may do a few sessions to help the person out, <clears throat> but it's not one of these long, drawn-out psychotherapy five-year kind of operations. It doesn't work that way. 280 Cfund 280 2386 star 1410 on the cell phone. And when we continue here with It's All in Your Head with Dr. Paul Swingle from Swingle & Associates, we'll talk about uh, a little bit more about medication and how it can really set you back over the long term. Uh, and, in fact, you had a patient that came in that was uh, severely medicated and uh, how you helped them through how long it took. And we'll talk more about neurotherapy, the medical science of adjusting brain waves to get you back to a more normal feeling human being. Again, our number, if you have any questions for Dr. Swingle, it's 280-C-FUND, 280-2386, or star 1410 on the cell phone. This is Experts on Call. You're listening to C-FUND, 1410 AM. Sunday morning with Dr. Paul Swingle from Swingle & Associates. And if you're not familiar with this show or with Dr. Paul Swingle, he uh, was a guy who headed up the Faculty of Child Psychology at the University of Ottawa before lecturing in psychiatry at Harvard for seven years. Now he's living in Vancouver and has become one of the leaders in the field of biofeedback and neurotherapy, the medical science of adjusting brain waves. And he has a free public lecture coming up on Wednesday at Confederation Community Center, 4585 Albert Street in Burnaby. It starts at 7. And all the questions you need answered on uh, neurotherapy and brainwave biofeedback for a wide a litany of different uh, conditions will all happen this Wednesday, 7 o'clock at the Confederation Community Center. Our telephone number is 280 fund 280-2386, star 1410 on the cell. And let's take a call from Gladys this morning. Hey, Gladys, thanks for waiting. You're on with Dr. Paul Swingle on CFUN 1410 AM. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so uh, what it is, is I was diagnosed about 20 years ago with clinical depression. I um, have a, a long history in my family of, you know, varying disorders from clinical depression to bipolar and, and whatnot, and, you know, many people are medicated. So they put me on, med on meds. It's a very low dose, and I take it just to maintain but after 20 years of, you know, taking these meds, and I've tried several times to ease off them with disastrous results and, and had to go back on, I'm uh, wondering if, if this is something that may be able to help me to get off my, my low dose of, uh, of, you know, Paxil every day and just uh, and without uh, and just return to normal without sleeping for 20 hours a day. Yes, uh, we see a lot of folks who have a history of uh, long-term medication use and what we do is correct the neurology of it and then gradually have you titrate off the medication and we work with a number of people who uh, can help us with the titration. Uh, some medications are not forgiving in terms of trying to titrate off and if you come off too quickly what happens is there's a rebound and you need more medication to get you back to where you were prior to uh, the titration. Sometimes they will uh, try to change you to another medication, a more forgiving one, something like Celexa, <clears throat> and then titrate you off the Celexa. So there are a variety of ways of doing it. But the first thing is to find out what the fundamental neurological predisposition is and correct it. Uh, as you point out, a lot of it is uh, genetic, it's heritable, uh, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean it's not correctable. Uh, right. What we were taught in medical and graduate school when I went to school is just wrong, period. Right. Uh, even if it is a genetic marker, it's correctable. And now, some, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, now I, I have a daughter as well now. And I, you know, as it is genetic, and I, I see the signs in her. Um, and of course, I don't want to um, put that on her because I'm only seeing her through my eyes. And, you know, my mm -hmm. eyes are my experience. and. So I'm a little bit, I'm very um, wary of, you know, looking at her and making my own self-diagnosis that, well, you know, she's got that trait as well. Is that something we can look at in her and determine whether or not she's got that genetic disposition to be somewhat unbalanced and, and deal with that at her young age now? We deal with that a lot. <clears throat> uh, Parents, uh, mothers bring their uh, kids in because there's a family history of some disorder, and they just want to check and see whether there's any predisposition. And then we 
then we can correct it. You know, Gladys, you don't sound like somebody who's imbalanced, but uh, I was wondering, <laughs> you, you just don't. You sound very chipper and bright today. I'm medicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when you went off the medication, was it, uh, was it part, partially a fear of, of just going back, or, or was there like a, did you have a real reaction when, when you went off of it? Um, you know, I weaned myself off slowly, and um, no, what happened is I just became less and less in control and, and, and more of like anger management issues, and I would just flip off the handle um, for the smallest infraction of something. And, you know, basically I started, you know, wars with everyone I knew over teeny tiny infractions and, you know, found myself at the end all alone and thought, well, what have I done here? And realized that I had become this sort of out of control, angry person when I came off my meds. And when I came back on, they just sort of kept me in check, in balance. You know, it's... Yeah, and <clears throat> that's uh, also quite common. Uh, yeah. By the way, have you ever had a head injury? Um, no, I, I never have. Not that I... Oh, wait. <laughs> what am I saying? Um, when I was three years old, uh, my brother dropped a brick on my head that required some, uh, some stitches uh, up the back of my head, I think. So, yeah, I had that. Well... One of the things that we find with individuals who have an anger issue when they come off the medications is they've had a head injury that's affected the right prefrontal cortex. Right. And that's where all of the uh, mood modulation and anger modulation and so forth takes place. So uh, what we would probably, well, what we might see in your case is in addition to a predisposition to depressed mood states, there might be a, a dysfunction in the right prefrontal cortex that we want to correct as well so that you don't have that effect of, of uh, when you come off medication that's sedating those areas. Mm-hmm. So are we talking lobotomy here? <laughs> <laughs> not, on, not on the first visit, on the second visit. <laughs> hey, Gladys, thanks so much for calling and sharing your story. Uh, I'm going to give you Dr. Swingle's number here. It's uh, 604 604- Six zero eight zero four forty four. Six zero eight zero four forty four. He's uh, downtown in Vancouver on Melville Street near Cole Harbor, and uh, his website is www.swingleandassociates.com. And Swingle is uh, spelled Swing L E. You can Google him when you get home. But uh, boy, there's a common. I mean, there's one of the ninety five percent of us, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, have gone through, and those symptoms sound so incredibly familiar too. Uh, and uh, you know, you talk about fixing it once and for all. Mm-hmm. Imagine saving 20 years of medication and always having to wonder what will happen if I, if I go off the medication. Yes, and the, you pay a price for long-term use of medication. It affects the uh, alpha frequencies, and the alpha frequencies are tied in with uh, cognitive uh, uh, problems as you get older and that sort of thing. But... Uh, you know, we were talking about 95% of the population would endorse a statement uh, of lowering of mood and so forth that would occur in any year. <clears throat> but uh, people that have clinically clinical levels of depression, it's very high. It's about 12% of the population. Uh, it runs about uh, 7% for employed, about 12.5% for unemployed. And it's also related to the kind of uh, occupation that you're in as well. 280 CFUN is our number, 280 2386, star 1410 if you're on the cell phone or if you're outside the lower mainland. Our toll free number is 1 877 280 CFUN. That's 1 877 280 CFUN if you're listening in Victoria and Nimo. Let's talk to Beverly, who's on the line and has an interesting question that affects, uh, of course, a lot of us. Hi, Beverly. Thanks for waiting. You're on with Dr. Paul Swingle on CFUN 1410 AM. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my question is: is that uh, your, your treatment can it help uh, the, the symptoms of menopause? Somebody that has, in my case, I have been through menopause, and during going through menopause, I did have a nervous breakdown. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last couple of months, I have been having similar symptoms again that uh, that I went through 13, 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is kind of nuts. So I went and had a bunch of tests with my doctor, and um, I was thinking menopause again myself. And he told me just last Friday that I'm going through menopause again for the second time. I had never heard of such a thing. Um, he said, yes, he said it's not uncommon. And I said, well, why don't women know about this? And he said, well, because we'd have them jumping off cliffs. So I 
it's it sort of put me in a in a fear based space, you know, right as we speak, because now I have the fear of going back to what happened to me, you know, like fourteen years ago. Sure. That's a very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> the one of the problems we run into is a person who's had an experience with depression. Once we fix it, they're hyper vigilant. And anything that suggests that they may be falling back into that pit just terrifies them. And a lot of what we do is reassure people that once it's fixed, it's fixed. And when you start to experience some of these things, it doesn't mean you're going to fall back in the pit. And we're right there, you know, if you need some, uh, some assistance at any point. Menopause, we see a lot of, uh, of uh, women who are struggling around that time. And what is almost always involved is a deficiency in a particular area of the brain that's associated with stress tolerance. Now, uh, what we do is we correct that area of the brain so that the, the uh, neurology of it is more stress tolerant. And people are able to respond much more efficiently in this life change cycle. Uh, and the fact that uh, individuals go through a second condition of that, the jury is out on that. And your physician is right, it does happen. Uh, but our feeling is that it may be both psychological and physiological because people go through changes, life changes, that may mimic something like menopause. You know, there may be a change in retirement of somebody or, or uh, oh, people well start to die. And yeah, that, that's something that's coming up for me in like in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Bingo. I think, uh, you know, correct the stress tolerance issue in the back of the brain uh, and then uh, work with somebody in terms of uh, where you're headed. One of the big problems, that's also very interesting. And again, thank you for sharing it. We see a lot of folks who uh, uh, become chronically depressed around retirement, uh, men more so than women. The problem is you're retiring away from something rather than heading towards something. And mm -hmm. it, it's saying something to you in terms of, you know, a change in where your life is going. Uh, uh, individuals who have a plan of where they're headed when they retire, they fare very well. Florida. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting, Beverly. Really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And I'll give you Dr. Swingle's number here because I know he can help you out. It's 604 608 We're going to talk about the costs involved in neurotherapy, the timeline and all that kind of stuff. But I also want to ask you about nervous breakdowns because Beverly just brought that up mm -hmm. and, and what it really means and what, uh, what is the signature of a, a nervous breakdown? I'll ask you about that in just a second. You're listening to Dr. Paul Swingle, and it's all in your head. Again, his number is 604 604-608-0444, 604-608-0444. The website is swingleandassociates.com, and we'll have more with Dr. Paul Swingle. It's all in your head next on CFUN, 1410 AM. Hey, thanks for joining us. It's all in your head here with Dr. Paul Swingle on CFUN 1410 AM. Again, Dr. Swingle with a free public lecture. Free, the best kind. And uh, it's happening on Wednesday, this Wednesday at the Confederation Community Center, 4585 Albert Street in Burnaby. It starts at 7 o'clock. You can get more details at Dr. Swingle's website, swingleandassociates.com. Our telephone number is 280-CFUN, 280-2386, star 1410. If you're driving around, we've had two very interesting calls uh, so far this morning, and uh, Beverly just talked about a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. w what are the signatures of a, of a nervous breakdown? What are the symptoms? What do people tell you? Because uh, we hear that term a lot, but I'm curious as to know what it really is. It's the inability to cope, <clears throat> in a nutshell. A hundred years ago, the uh, great philosopher, uh, psychologist William James, had a diagnostic category. And that a diagnostic category was torn to pieces hood. That's really what a nervous breakdown is. You just lose the capability to cope. Now, there are a lot of things associated with that. Inevitably, there's a sleep quality problem. 
You would just run out of the ability to restore and recuperate. And now you may be sleeping 14 hours a day or more, but the quality of that sleep is, is not adequate. Uh, you are inevitably people who report that they have, quote, a nervous breakdown, have a severe deficiency of a particular waveform in the back of the brain. And that waveform is associated with uh, stress tolerance, the ability to cope. And when we correct that, we correct a lot of things. And for those people who are still a little unsure as to what neurotherapy is, having gone through it myself, it's very relaxing. The hardest thing I found, uh, because it's so relaxing, is trying to stay awake during the treatments, which you, you really have to. But you also talk a lot about how important sleep and dreaming is mm. after you've had your sessions. Yes. we. Uh, whenever we're doing uh, particularly trauma release, uh, individuals dream a lot, and they may dream about the traumatic material, but it tends not to be disturbing. Uh, and they typically think about the uh, the trauma it's on the front burner for maybe 48 hours, and that's it. It's very efficient. 280-CFUN, 280-2386 is our phone number. Let's talk to Randy, who's on the line. Thanks for waiting, Randy. You're on with Dr. Paul Swingle on CFUN 1410 AM. Hi there. I have a tendency to uh, procrastinate, and there's, uh, you know, like pressure situations. I tend to, you know, you know, like sleep a lot when they come up. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that's all related or and if there's treatments and how long would it take to correct this? Yes, that's one of the principal uh, symptoms associated with depression, particularly among males, by the way. And that's a loss of interest uh, issue and kind of treating yourself by, by uh, sleeping. And then you oversleep, and that affects your ability to, to uh, function efficiently, uh, process information efficiently. Uh, the treatment of this is very straightforward. <clears throat> we have a look at uh, what areas of the brain are associated with the depressed mood state. In this particular situation, there tends to be one area that's associated with that form of depression, and that tends to respond pretty quickly to uh, uh, to a treatment. Uh, we might be thinking in the range of uh, 10 sessions or so. There is another issue here, though, Randy, and that is once you've developed a habit of this, then we've got that habit to deal with in addition to the, uh, the neurotherapy. Change takes effort, so we would be working with you in terms of, as we say, suit up and show up. Answer your yeah. question, Randy? Yeah, I was just also like, is that the reason why, like, you know, every morning, you know, it's like even if I have eight hours sleep, I'm tired? Like, you know, it's... Absolutely. Uh, fatigue is uh, one of the principal symptoms associated with depression. Randy, I'll give you Dr. Swingle's number. It's 604-608-0444. I'd be happy to answer more questions. Uh, go for a brain mapping session. It's to take six minutes, and it's, uh, I, I find it very interesting. I think the biggest thing... And, and I could say this, uh, you know, from personal experience is the, the hope you have afterwards. There's that hopeful spirit. You know what? You can uh, have this fixed and it's fixed for good. Yes. Uh, I like to give the example of this absurdity of uh, the DSM-4, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for the American Psychiatric Association. Even the architects of that have said that it doesn't work. But it's funny. That's the category system. You know, you need five out of a list of eight to be classified as ADD or depressed or whatever. So I often tease clients. So you're feeling, uh, you have feelings of worthlessness and guilt nearly every day. Uh, you can't sleep. You stare at the ceiling every night. You have recurrent thoughts of death and suicidal ideation. Your feelings uh, of emptiness and sadness. The good news is you're not depressed. And because you only have four of them. Because <laughs> you only four have four five. of what they say. Ah, mm. It's just ludicrous. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about the brain map is uh, the label is absolutely irrelevant. You know, we have a saying, psychiatric labels don't peel off. And uh, when you come in and, and we see the areas of the brain that are not working efficiently, we talk about symptoms. Uh, do you have a a predisposition, you know, to feel sad. Uh, are you having a sleep quality problem, <clears throat> etc.? So there are a lot of things that we can tell from the brain map.
and it takes, like I said, six minutes, uh, and you get to, it, It's amazing when uh, Dr. Swingle tells you why you're there and uh, lists off all these feelings and symptoms that uh, you actually you have. It's a little frightening, actually, <laughs> but at least you know that you're on the right track towards treating the right thing. Well, that's, that's where the hope comes from. You know, a lot of people come in and they've been trying to tell their tale to all kinds of people and they don't believe it or they don't understand it or they say it's all in your head and, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, here they're sitting uh, in my office for 15 or 20 minutes. And I tell them why they're there. Of course that gives them hope. Absolutely. I mean, there's a reason why I'm feeling this way. And if we can address that reason, my life's going to change and it will. We're going to take some more phone calls in just a second here and pause for a moment to uh, take a phone call next. Uh, you're listening to Dr. Paul Swingle at swingleandassociates.com. Uh, his telephone number six zero eight zero four forty four six zero eight zero four forty four for his downtown clinic on Melville Street. This is It's All in Your Head on CFUN 1410 AM. We've been talking about depression today with Dr. Paul Swingle from Swingle and Associates. He is an expert in the field of uh, biofeedback and neurotherapy, the medical science of adjusting brain waves. Uh, of course, uh, he has a lot more than that on his resume, and which is why uh, we want to always encourage you to to go to a full service type neurotherapist that has psychology or psychiatry as well registered. And we'll talk about the, the cost in just a moment because, uh, of course, a lot of uh, coverage now has extended coverage, which includes uh, registered psychology or psychotherapy. Uh, let's take a phone call right now, though, at 280-CFUN, 280-2386. Trottle is on the line. And hi, Trottle. You're on with Dr. Paul Swingle on CFUN 1410 AM. Yes, hello, doctor. Hello. I'd like to know um, how successful you would be with anxiety and panic attacks my husband suffers from. Plus, he's diagnosed uh, with COPD, mm. and he's also on drugs. Um, prednisone, would that help also to get off prednisone easier? Uh, yes. Anxiety exacerbates everything. Yeah. So if we can uh, reduce the levels of anxiety, then the body is more efficient at self-regulation. Exactly. Now, uh, our hit rate, our success rate with panic and anxiety is extraordinarily good. Um, there are specific areas of the brain associated with these conditions, and once we normalize those, then the, the person is not fighting the neurology of it. And we also give them some uh, procedures that they can use when they're up and around to uh, help them through any condition that might be giving rise to the uh, uh, anxiety and the panic. Uh, we have some procedures that uh, st uh, where you stimulate the acupuncture points yourself. You just rub them, <clears throat> and we know they affect the brain in a particular way because we've done full brain maps uh, when people are using these procedures so we know precisely what it's doing to the brain. And if we have a situation in which we can increase one particular <clears throat> waveform associated with stress tolerance, then, of course, you're going to have the benefit of that. Uh, Trottle, do you mind if I ask how old your husband is? He's 76. So mm -hmm. does he worry when he has a panic attack that he's having a heart attack? He worries about everything. Yes. That's the problem, you know, and I think it throws us back in the healing process. I mean, I do a lot for him food-wise, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I like him to get better, but I think uh, we're going three steps forward and we're going two back again, yes. you know. Yes. And the drugs, uh, uh, so far, the prednisone, he seems to need it. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to get off it gradually. We work with the doctor, okay, but um, uh, there's only um, a limit what he can do. And it's the mind that is so powerful, right? We know that. And I was hoping for someone like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we say, it's all in your head. Yeah. <laughs> Where else would it be? I, I agree. <laughs> In fact, we did a whole show on panic attacks. I had one of those once, and you just think your whole world is collapsing in. And, mm -hmm. and uh, this is something that uh, you have. Uh, you know, I like it when you say this is an easy problem to fix, but when you add in the medication, it makes it a little bit more complex. Well, prednisone is, uh, in terms of uh, its sedating effect, is not a real villain here. Prednisone is a uh, steroid, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> once you... Uh, uh, 
get the uh, brainwave activity more normalized, then uh, titrating down off the prednisone uh, is much easier. We see a lot of folks with uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, which <clears throat> is treated with uh, steroids, prednisone in particular. Uh, and then prednisone can have a mood-altering effect. So uh, one of the things they want to do is try to get off that corticosteroid. And uh, when we correct the brain activity, they're able to titrate down. Six zero eight zero four forty four Trottle is the telephone number for Dr. Swingle in his clinic on Melville. Six zero eight zero four forty four. And uh, just because her husband is seventy six, uh, doesn't make a difference at all. I mean, it's the same treatment for infants as it is for well, infants, young children, as it is for people who are in their seventies. Well, I hope so, <laughs> given my age. I <laughs> uh, appreciate your phone call. Great phone calls today at 280 C Fund, 280-2386. You had a, a patient come in that had habituated on medications and was told there was nothing more that anybody could do. And it took a while, but I think the key uh, point to make is that uh, it, it takes commitment sometimes to, to go through this, especially when you've been on medication for such a long time. Those are the particularly tragic cases, individuals that <clears throat> have a long history of medication use, and they're <clears throat> up at max levels. They're very sedated. Uh, their uh, spouse and family, they're talking to the drugs. They're not talking to the person. There's a hollow shell. And the people know that. And uh, they desperately want to uh, try to regain back their life. And uh, that's the, the real optimism of neurotherapy, you know, the possibility for you to resume and have a full and complete life. Very heavy medication. And it takes a, a long time to uh, help the person titrate down off of that. And courage and giving them support and feelings of safety, all of those are big issues here, very big issues. But you've seen, I mean, uh, I, I'm guessing that part of the reason why you, you do the job you do is because you've seen so much before and after. So many people who are at uh, at the bottom end of the, uh, the tidal wave mm -hmm. uh, and then live normal and happy lives and you and you know you think about somebody who called earlier that spent 20 years on medication and always worried if she'd what, what would happen if i go off of them i mean how debilitating that would be to her career to her family i mean you must see that all the time that affects also your feeling about who you are because if you have that condition we talked about shame earlier <clears throat> you know you feel deficient you feel that you need this in order to be a complete person and but you recognize that people are talking to the medication, not talking to you. Let's talk about the uh, financial aspect of this. Uh, and uh, you you always say it is the best uh, kind of therapy money can buy because uh, once it's fixed, it's fixed. So when somebody comes in for the first time and they do a brain map, it itself takes about six minutes. You sit and chat for a little bit. How much does that cost? The initial basic brain map is one hundred and eighty dollars. The uh, treatments average about one hundred and fifteen hundred and twenty dollars each, depending upon the level of service that's required. Uh, it is covered by extended medical. Whatever you get for a, a registered clinical psychologist is what you'll get back from your insurance company. And what isn't covered is a tax deductible medical expense because you are seeing a registered psychologist. So when you uh, look at those issues and those factors, and, and the fact that for something like depression, I mean, I know there's no one set amount of treatments. It's completely individual. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, with me in my sleep, it took, I think, only six or seven, if I can recall, six mm -hmm. or seven treatments, uh, which isn't all that much. No, not at all. If you consider the uh, uh, cost of the medic prescription medication, uh, you, you're certainly past the break-even point now. That's right. Well, and I did get a, a great tax uh, break on on that particular uh, on those particular sessions. Uh, let's talk uh, very quickly about uh, two things. Again, your book should be coming out in the spring. Uh, Biofeedback for the brain, and that'll be for the general public. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, a pretty uh, reputable publishing company putting that one out on the shelves. Rutgers University Press. Right. So, what will we find in that book? <clears throat> Everything you need to know about the brain. <laughs> With pictures? <laughs> yeah, we'll, you know, we'll give you a few pictures. <clears throat> it, it's a perfect book for somebody like a parent. They have a child with ADD, and they want to know what are the options, what are the possibilities here, and exactly how do we proceed, and what is the evidence. Uh, that's what, this is the book for them. 
uh, an individual who is depressed and they don't want to be medicated, they don't want to be sedated, what are the possibilities? And we go over all of the treatment associated with depression, what are what the data look like, uh, what our success rates are, some case studies. Uh, that's the book for them. Now, you have a free lecture coming up this Wednesday at the Confederation Community Center. Are you actually going to show uh, what neurotherapy does? Can you actually, are you going to bring some equipment down, or is it just basically a, a general discussion? Oh, you will love this. We have our new brain mapping uh, software. Uh, by the way, uh, if for individual come in with traumatic brain injury or epilepsy or something really serious, then we do a full brain map. We put a cap over their head and we measure all 19 sites simultaneously and we can look right inside the brain. And we can look at subcortical structures from surface electrodes and we can see precisely where the area of problem is. So we can treat subcortical structures with the neurotherapy. And what you'll see at the public lecture is a brain <coughs> being rotated up on the screen. I mean, lots of nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's free. This Wednesday, October 17th at the Confederation Community Center, 4585 Albert Street in Burnaby, a 7 o'clock start. And if you just want more details, visit Dr. Swingle's website, uh, www uh, dot swingle and associates dot com swingle and associates dot com and swingle is spelled swing l e if you want to google him when you get home uh, obviously you're busy you have a lot of people coming in but you have a great doctor there dr terry rhodes that's helping you out now finally you found somebody you searched worldwide that's right uh, and now we got to wrap things up uh, with your favorite song yes it's all in your head <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a wonderful world if i'm not mistaken yes it is hey we'll see you next time thanks dr swindle <laughs> okay bye bye <clears throat> and I think to myself